Hello, I'm Lee and you're there and in this video we're going to be discussing some of the most iconic medieval weapons including axes, maces, swords, spears, longbows and crossbows. There is plenty to discuss so without further ado let's get started. Let's start off with axes. Now axes are incredibly good at chopping which allowed them to chop down trees so that the wood could be used for all kinds of things like fires, buildings and furniture. And because every medieval household needed a fire for warmth, for light and for heat, every medieval household would have needed one of these. That meant that if you were under attack or called to war and had nothing else, you could pick up your trusty wood axe and use that as a weapon. Because axes like these weren't really weapons by design, they were tools which were then converted and used as weapons. Small axes like this could also be used as throwing weapons, but you had to beware because anything that you threw at the enemy could also be thrown back at you. And because of an axe's shape, it could also be used as a hook on the battlefield to hook over enemy shields and pull down their defences. Maces were a much more simple weapon. If you couldn't chop or stab something to death, you would pick up your mace and you could squash it to death. Medieval armour was particularly effective at stopping cuts and stabs, which is why maces began to be used. Maces allowed soldiers to crush the opponent's armour breaking the bones of the soldier underneath. Because maces are quite heavy, relying on percussive power, in order for them to be wielded effectively, they had to be relatively short, which meant that you had to get up close and personal with someone when you were fighting them. Because maces are short, if you're ever facing an opponent with a spear, you'd struggle to get close enough to actually do any damage. Which brings us on to spears. Now, Spears were one of the most common weapons on the medieval battlefield because they're very, very simple to make and very simple to use. They're a long stick with a sharp metal piece on the end. Spears were commonly used as anti-cavalry weapons to stop the enemy horses dead in their tracks. Groups of spearmen would gather together, brace the ends of their spears into the ground and point the blades forwards, creating a wall of spears, which even the most determined enemy cavalry would be unable to charge through. For those who could afford them, swords were tools of war, able to deal out death from pommel to point. The tip of the sword was long and thin, perfect for stabbing through opponent's armour. The blade double-sided so that it could be deadly both on the foreswing and on the backswing. The crossguard protected the soldier's hand, stopping their fingers from being cut off, and the pommel kept it all balanced. which brings us to the longsword. And though the longsword may just look like a slightly longer version of the sword that we just looked at, it's in fact all four of the previous weapons rolled into one. Longswords are typically wielded with two hands, giving them greater reach, power and control. And because both hands were busy holding the weapon, you couldn't also hold a shield, which meant that most soldiers wielding a longsword would be fully plated in heavy armour. Like a short sword, the long sword has a pointed tip and sharp blade. The long sword's blade, however, could be gripped halfway up, turning it into a short spear for stabbing into enemy armour. In dire situations, the blade could also be held completely, turning the pommel into a mace and the crossguard into a hook, hooking over enemy defences and pulling their defences down. Longbows were arguably one of the most deadly weapons of the Middle Ages, famously used by the English army during the Hundred Years' War against the French. These bows would be capable of firing thousands upon thousands of arrows down onto enemy troops before they could get close enough to attack. Longbows are incredibly difficult to draw back, which is where they get all of their power from. Longbowmen had to train for years and years and years to be able to build up the muscles capable of drawing it back all the way to their ear. The crossbow, on the other hand, was designed so that it could be used by any soldier. However, it did have some drawbacks. It wasn't capable of firing quite as far, and it wasn't capable of firing quite as fast. 
only able to shoot between four and six crossbow bolts per minute, compared to the longbow's 10 and 12 arrows per minute. This video has hardly scratched the surface of the incredible history of medieval weapons. So, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments section below. We really look forward to reading them. And if you still wanted to learn more, check out one of our Medieval Mondays videos. But until next time, take care.